and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video tutorial, we're going to talk about setting up your website header. So, when we talk about the header, there are two major header types that you can have with Stockholm. You can have a header at the top of your page, which is shown on this demo site here. We can see that the header and the menu are above the page content. Or you can have a header on the left side of the page, as on this demo where your header content and menu will be to the left of the page. Now, in this video, we're going to focus on creating a top header, and I'll be using this demo to take you through it. Let's get started. So, this here is my site. As we can see, there is a header at the top, it has a light background, there's a logo and a search icon, but there's no menu. So, let's go ahead and assign a menu to my header. I'm going to navigate to my dashboard, then Appearance, Menus. This is a demo menu. You'll be making your own, of course. When I scroll down this page, over here we see several different menu locations, different places where you can display the menu. So here where it says Top Navigation, you will want to make sure that you have a menu assigned there, since this will let it appear in your header. And then click on Save. Now we can check the page. Let's refresh. And we can see that the menu is here now. Since that's sorted, let's go take a look at some of the header options. We'll need our dashboard and let's navigate to Select Options, Header. And in here we will have the options that allow us to make header settings. These are global options. The settings that you apply here will take effect on all pages across your site. So, starting from the top, it sets Switch to Left Menu. You want to make sure that this is set to No, as we want our menu to be at the top instead of having it on the left. Then, Header and Grid. By keeping this option enabled, the content of the header will fit within your page grid. Let me show you what that means on the page. My header is set to be in grid, so its content fits within a specified pixel width. Usually that's something between 1100 and 1300 pixels. But if you put no here, let's see that. Save changes. And refresh. Now the header spans full width across the page. The menu is all the way to the right and the logo is far left. I'm going to set my header in grid again. Now down here it says header type. As we can see, Stockholm supports several different header types. They all differ in design and functionality. Currently my header is set to fixed. So, the fixed header, it stays at the top of the page. Let's see what that looks like in practice. When I scroll down, the header stays fixed at the top of the page. So this is what the fixed header does, it always stays visible at the top of the page. So if you want your site visitors to have easy access to the menu at all times, this is a very good user-friendly choice. Now let's take a look at the regular header. I'm going to save and I'll refresh my page so we can see it. The regular header is in grid. And when we scroll down, it doesn't appear and follow us. It always stays at the top. If we go back upward, it doesn't appear on scroll up either. It stays firmly at the top. Alright, let's see one of our other options. Like the fixed advanced header. Save changes, and we can take a look. With the fixed advanced header, the logo is centered at the top. Underneath the logo, we have the menu, also centered. And when we scroll down, the menu vanishes, but we can still see the logo. However, once I hover over the logo, the menu appears. So this is also a very practical and elegant header. Now let's set the sticky header. OK. Save and head over to refresh the page. Now, when I scroll, the header is staying fixed at the top of the page. That's why it's called sticky. It sticks by you. Same if you scroll up. The sticky follows you whichever direction you go. In this way, it's similar to the fixed header. The only difference is that this one is not fixed at the top of the page at all times. It appears after a certain amount of scrolling. So this is a good choice if you have, like, a slider at the top of the page. And you don't want your visitors to get an obstructed view of that slider when they start scrolling down. In that case, go back to the options. Down here we can set the scroll amount for sticky. 
This is where you can define the amount of pixels that you want users to scroll down before the sticky header appears. Once users scroll down beyond the slider or whatever else you have at the top of the page that you don't want to be obscured, that's when the sticky header appears. I'll demonstrate. Let's say 600 pixels and save. Now, when we refresh the page and start scrolling, there we are. The header appears once I've passed the slider section. You can make the scroll amount for sticky larger or smaller, it all depends on your design. Alright, let's take a look at the remaining header types. Here we have sticky expanded. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to leave the same scroll amount for sticky as I still have that slider at the top of my page and I don't want it covered up. Now, the sticky expanded header has a logo in the upper left corner. And underneath the logo we have a menu. And once again, when I scroll down, the sticky header appears after a certain amount of scroll. This layout with logo at the top and the menu underneath is commonly used with business-oriented sites. So if that's your niche, this header type is a great choice. Alright, now let's go back to the global header options. And let's take a look at the sticky divided header. Again, I'm leaving the same scroll amount. And let's refresh the page. The sticky divided header is supposed to have a logo in the center of the header and menu items on either sides of the logo. But as we can see here, I don't have my menu showing. So let's fix that by navigating to the dashboard and going to Appearance Menus. I am in what's supposed to be my main menu. And when I scroll down here, I see two additional menu locations. It says left top navigation and right top navigation. So, if you're using the sticky divided header, you'll need one menu to the left side of your logo and one menu to the right. Then you'll use these options to make sure you have menus assigned to both of these menu locations. I'm going to quickly demonstrate how to do that using menus I made in advance. With the sticky divided, you need two separate menus. So, once you have yours ready, simply select them for editing and choose the appropriate display location. And save the menu. Also, it helps to give the menus easy to recognize names, such as sticky right for your right top navigation. And save. Now, I've assigned menus to both of these menu locations, so let's go ahead and refresh the page. Our divided header now has a menu in it. So, this area here, this is the top left navigation, and this area here, this is the right top navigation. OK, let's go back to the header options. I'm going to set my header back to fixed again so I have the default settings back. You may have noticed as you're choosing your header type, some new options appear below it. These belong to that particular header type, such as the scroll amount for sticky. The options are fairly straightforward and each has additional clarification underneath. So, depending on which header you opt for, you might have to make a few additional settings in these new options. Alright, now moving on, we have header height. You can set how high your header will be in pixels. And here it says header skin. We have three different options here. If you leave this blank, it will be set to default. And there's also light and dark. Rather than try to explain it here, I'll change this option to light so we can see what it does. Now, when I refresh my page, it looks like the menu is gone. But actually, if I select my header, it's there. But everything is white. That's why it's not visible. I changed the skin to light and it made everything in the header turn light and melt into the background. So, let's give our header a background color. I'm just going to pick it random, say this one. All right. Let's refresh. Now this looks better. So, on a contrasting background, we can see that the menu is there. With the light header skin, my menu text is white. If you choose to change your header skin and its content seems to vanish, don't panic, you just need a bit of contrasting color. Now let's set a dark header skin so we can see that one. And I'm going to refresh my page. With the dark header skin, my logo is there, but my menu text is black, and the search icon is too. So the light and dark header skins, these are predefined styles. 
Let me just restore these settings first. After that, we have header transparency. So this field accepts values between 0 and 1. In order to have a fully transparent header, you will want to enter 0. So let's save changes and see what this looks like. Refresh. And my header is now transparent. I can see the slider section underneath it. But when we start to scroll, the header becomes opaque. If you want it to stay transparent as you scroll, you need to add the same decimal value to the After Scroll field in Header Transparency. Now, going back to the Initial Transparency option, if you enter 1, you will have a solid header background. In order to have a semi-transparent header, you can enter a decimal value. So I'm going to enter 0.5. This should give me a semi-transparent header. Alright. Refresh. And now I have a semi-transparent header. You can adjust the degree of transparency by changing the decimal value. For now, I'm going to reset this. The rest of these options are fairly straightforward, so I'd like us to move on. If you take a look at some of the Stockholm demo sites, they have differently customized headers. But beyond that, you might notice that some have a header which is comprised of two different sections. For example, the Eva demo. Here we see that there's a top header and there's also a bottom header. I'm going to go back to Select Options, Header. Now you can scroll down or take a shortcut like me and click on Header Top. And the option here says Show Header Top Area. So I'm going to set Yes. And now we get several different options for the header top. I'm going to go ahead and assign it a background color so it's easier to tell apart from the header bottom. And we need to refresh the page. And here's our header top. In order to add content to the header top, you will need to use widgets. To do that, navigate to Appearance, Widgets. Here on the right is a view of all your site's widget areas. We are looking for the ones with header top in the name. And here they are. Header top left and header top right widget areas. I'm going to open the first one and drag over a text widget to add it. And then I'll do the same for the second one. Now I'll just type something in so we can see it on the page. Like top left area. And save. Then I'll put top right area in the second one. Again, save. And I can minimize them before we head over to check the page. Let's refresh. And there are my widgets in the header top. Here's the top right area, and on the other side we have the top left area. You can have all kinds of things here. Social icons, a click to call number, a drop down card, a menu. Basically any widget you have can be put here. I use text only as an example. One more thing I wanted to show you real quick. Let's go to Pages, All Pages, and let's open our home page backend. So far we've been looking at its front. Now I want us to briefly look at the back. Ok, it's open for editing in WP Bakery, so your view might be different depending on which page builder you're using. However, that's not the point here. The point is that if you scroll past the page content, you're going to reach the section with the page settings. And in here you'll find a couple of header options. Why is this important? Well, you'll find options like these on every page. They are here so you can create exceptions to the site-wide rules set in global theme options. By global theme options I mean the select options and within them the header settings. So if you use the global header options to set the default header skin, this will apply to your entire site. However, you can now use the page-specific header options to make your home page, or whatever page, header different compared to the rest of your site. So you can give your home page a light header skin and make the header transparent without affecting the rest of your site. Update. Now let's see it. And there's my light transparent header. The difference in settings will be visible only on this one page because we set it here. If I go to another page, say the blog large image one, we can see that the header skin is dark and the header itself opaque. 
That's because it's drawing on the global header settings. So depending on your site design, these options, which you can use to override global settings, are something you might want to keep in mind, especially if you want to visually distinguish one page or another. And that's it! We hope you found this tutorial on setting your website header useful and that you learned something new. If you want to be notified about upcoming videos, you can subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.